and welcome to my kitchen and today we are going to be doing some Pinterest recipes tested. Yes, I moved it over to this channel. Now it is, now it is ours. So I scoured through Pinterest and I found a couple of recipes that I want to test out with you guys. I'm not gonna lie to you, there were a lot of really disgusting ones and I was like, um, nope. I'm sorry, I don't need to make eyeballs. I just, I don't. I have no reason to like Although I am making worms, so what do I know? If you like this video and you want to see more of these types of recipes, give this video a thumbs up so I know this is something you guys want to see more of in the future. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. And without further ado, let's get into this. I saw these worms on Pinterest and I was like, oh my gosh, these look interesting. I don't know if I want to eat them, but I really want to make them. So here is what you are going to need. You are going to need some flexible straws, a mason jar to hold them all in, some whipping cream, green food coloring, some form of gelatin you can do. Um, there's vegan ones, there's regular gelatin, whatever you can find or feel comfortable using, and then some raspberry jello. Also some boiling water, which wasn't in the ingredients list, but you do need some. You also need some form of measuring cup that is gonna hold like three cups of liquid, just as a heads up. So first we're gonna make the jello because that needs to set in the fridge for 20 minutes or so until it's like lukewarm. So we are going to pour this raspberry jello powder into here. Then you're gonna put in three packages of whatever gelatin you're gonna be using. And I'm going to pour in three cups of water. Oh my gosh, the smell of it is amazing. Okay, we're gonna give this a good stir. I'm gonna stick this in the fridge for 20 minutes and I will be right back. So while that's setting, we're gonna work on getting our straws ready for the mason jar. So I have some flexible straws here, which are in neon colors, which is very exciting. And it is very important for this that the little stretchy flexible part, this part right here, it is stretched out and the stretchy part is in the bottom and not bent. So let's, let's try that again. And I'm gonna save all these pink ones because my daughter likes pink, so I'm gonna put those back. So you wanna fit as many as you possibly can into the mason jar until it is entirely full. That's, that's the goal here. No one said this is gonna be easy. No one said that Halloween recipes were, were gonna be an easy thing to do. That looks good, right? We're good. This is good. Now I'm gonna measure out a three quarter cup of whipping cream and we're gonna be adding some green food coloring in it to just make the, the worms a little bit more on the brownie end and not magenta pink. Which, while fabulous, is not exactly the look we're going for. So the jello mixture has finally set. And I'm not gonna lie to you, it's been like 50 minutes. We have our mint green formula and our bright red formula and apparently this is gonna turn into like a pink wormy brown. I don't know, what do you guys think? Is this like a too pink for a worm? I'm gonna add some more food color. Bear with me, because I want this to look good. That's better. More of like a murky color, that's what I'm looking for. Now we wanna take our straws and we want to carefully pour it over the, the straw. Now according to this woman, she says all you need to do is pour it through the center and eventually all the straws will sort of even themselves out. So that is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take her word for it. I don't believe her. You know what, she came up with this recipe, so what am I to say otherwise? She said to do this very, very slowly. You can see that all the extra product is all going to the, the bottom there. I have no way of knowing if this is actually in the straws. Mixture, are you in there? It doesn't look like there's any product in the actual straws, which is making me very, very nervous. But like, there must be, right? Now you'll notice that a lot of the liquid is still in here and that's because only half of the number of straws actually fit in my mason jars. So if you want, you could do two mason jars or just have a bigger mason jar to begin with. But just as a heads up, that's why I have leftovers. So now we're going to stick this in the fridge for eight hours, or probably for me it'll be overnight. So we have right here, we have our straw taken out of the jar. So all I'm gonna do is I'm going to run this under hot water. And that's just supposed to make it like come out a lot easier. All right. And now I can see it in the straw, it's like right here. So I'm just gonna like push it through. <gasps> oh my gosh. That's so gross, ew, I don't wanna touch it. It takes a lot of work to get them out though. She wasn't wrong, this woman that did, did this. Oh, I have to do like another 40 of these? There you go. Does that look like a worm or what? Oh, it's so gross. So the other trick she said is you can lay a whole bunch of them out with a rolling pin and roll them out. So we're gonna see if that actually works. Oh, that's way faster. Look at that. Ta-da! Highly recommend if you're gonna do this for parties, definitely use a rolling pin. It makes it so much faster. Look at them, a whole bunch of 
gross and disgusting and delicious worms. And finally, the last recipe we are going to be testing today is a sort of like a cobweb-like design on top of cupcakes. And I thought this was so cool. And if this works, I think it looks really, really awesome. You're going to need the following things to create this for yourself. Um, you're going to need some form of icing. So you can either do like the canned variety or this is just um, butter and icing sugar, a little bit of milk, and then a bald cupcake. And then you are going to need some Hershey Kisses. Um, as you can see, I already ate some. Then some form of melting chocolate and then marshmallows. The first thing I'm gonna do is microwave up this chocolate so it is nice and smooth. There are a few things in life that are more awesome than watching chocolate melt. So I think it's important for this particular recipe to work well is that you need to have a significant amount of icing on to create almost like a mountain on top to create the cobwebs over top and to make it actually look like you have something there. It is pretty important for this particular recipe that the icing be very hearty. You don't want anything too smooth and runny. It's gonna have to stay in place. So I have a bunch of icing here and I'm just gonna like plop it on top because really, is there a such thing as too much icing? There is not. Now that I have a bunch of icing on top, I'm just gonna stick it in the fridge for a couple minutes just to let it set because I'm going to be covering it with hot chocolate. So I'll be right back. All right, so while that is cooling, we are gonna go on to the um, marshmallows and we're going to be microwaving about a cup of them. You wanna do this in 15 second intervals so it doesn't explode all over the microwave. Stir them up. Oh, this is a close second to melted chocolate. All right, so this girl has like the cupcake up in like a crown on the top. I thought I put a lot of icing on. Apparently I did not. All right, back in the freezer. So my icing seems to have a little bit more height to it now. So now I'm going to dip it into the chocolate and get it all nice and coated. I just wanna eat this right now, I'm not gonna lie to you. And then they stuck a Hershey kiss in the top, like so. Ta-da! Now I'm gonna put this back in the fridge so that the chocolate can set and we will get into the marshmallow cobwebs. Apparently what you do is you take your little melted down marshmallow contraptions here and then you just kind of dip your fingers in. Oh, yep, that's, that's marshmallow for you. You just kind of wind your fingers like, over it and stuff. All right, so that's my first attempt at doing this. There are a couple of things that I would do differently. Number one, I would use an ice cream scoop when um, putting on the icing and I would make sure that it was really, really solid, like almost frozen, like ice cream. And um, I would also make sure that the marshmallow was nice and warm when I was applying it because I started to use sort of cool down marshmallow and you can see it started to clump and blob a little bit. Um, so it does take a little bit of finessing to get the technique down, but overall I think this could be really, really fun and it would look really, really cool. And that is everything for this video. Give it a thumbs up if you like these types of videos and you wanna see some more recipes tested or maybe some of our you know, family tried and true recipes or something like that. And um, I hope you guys are all having an amazing, amazing week so far and are so excited for Halloween because I know I am. And I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you girls. Mwah.